here we have a U.S. state spokesman uh, admitting that the Israeli government committed war crimes and human rights violations uh, in the West Bank uh, way before uh, October 7th and the genocide in Gaza happened. Uh, it's pretty safe to say that the Israeli government has been the aggressor when you, you know, send out units to, uh, you know, an occupied territory and commit uh, human rights violations, that's you being the aggressor. Uh, a careful process, uh, we found uh, five um, Israeli units uh, responsible for individual incidents of uh, gross violations of human rights. Um, all of these were incidents uh, much before uh, October 7th, and none uh, took place in Gaza. Uh, Which means it... Uh... All the human rights violations took place in the West Bank, which the Israeli government loves to send uh, military units into the West Bank to do raids, kidnap people, kill people, as well as protect uh, Israeli settlers so that they can create illegal settlements. And those settlers also kill people. And if uh, the Palestinians in the West Bank try to defend themselves, they get killed. Four of these units have effectively remediated these violations, which is what we expect partners to do. Um, it is uh, consistent with uh, what we expect all countries whom with we have a security relationship with. It's funny how we can explain how the Israeli government remediated these uh, human rights violations and what happened to the military units that were committing the human rights violations, were they put in prison for war crimes? Uh, probably not. For uh, a remaining unit, uh, we continue to be in, in, in consultations and engagements with the government of Israel. They have submitted additional information as it pertains to that unit, and we're continuing to have those conversations, uh, consistent with the memorandum of understanding that we have with the government of Israel that um, was entered into.